Good evening. Welcome. It's been on my heart. I've, I've not been able to see many patients and many people, people, clients, whatever I want to call them. I, I work in cognitive behavior. So it's, sort of, it's a form of psychotherapy. And it's, it's with people who are, um, who are struggling with life. So struggling with destructive behaviors and things and they don't know how to quit. So I help. Um, I do it differently than most people. And um, I, for me, it's, it's biblical based. I like to, to help people biblical based. And um, I want to give you some clues, not some clues, some ways on how to overcome things. So let me just explain to you, <clears throat> cognitive behavior, it's a, it's a, I know it sounds very fancy, but actually it's not. It's just your, your way of thinking is unhelpful to you. So the patterns you, you build in your brain, your thought patterns are destructive to you. So for every thought that you have, there is every negative thought there is a positive thought so you can replace that now <clears throat> when we look at when i look at someone with for example depression if someone has depression it's not an uh or anxiety whatever emotion you want to you you want to say it's not something they can catch so it's not like like COVID, you can you catch it when you go outside or you get in contact with people. Emotions are thoughts that have been left to stay in your brain for a long time. And you actually meditate on it without knowing. So your thoughts, your behaviors, and your emotions are all interlinked. So what you thought, sorry, what you thought, <laughs> what you think you become. So just like Proverbs says, as a man thinketh, so he is. So I teach people probably something different than most. What I teach is you cannot change, you know, you may not be able to change your world outside. But when you start working on your own inside, you can, you're able to keep that clean. So... And if I look at Paul and the boys, the apostles, they, they had this, um, this take on it, on life. That nothing is, nothing can touch them. Whether they live or whether they die, they are in Christ. So it really doesn't matter what happens to them because they know that they're not going anywhere. So I'll give you the example. I see people with anger management and um, I need to teach them, I need to train them, I need to educate them on why they feel the way that they feel. So I will then speak to them about their thoughts because their thoughts are the driver behind their emotions and the emotions are the driver behind their behavior. Now... God gives us something very, very um, direct to say every thought that goes against the knowledge of God is a stronghold in your mind. And these things also just don't appear. They don't just come out of nowhere. It's thoughts that you have in your mind that are toxic to you. They poison you. So if, say for example you have a thought that goes against the knowledge of God. You have a thought that says, where was God when I needed him? God has forsaken me. But then you go back to scripture and says, my God will never forsake me. It's impossible. If you don't do that, you see your, your mind, you can teach, you can teach your mind anything. Your, your mind, your mind will always go to the default. So your mind will always teach you. If you don't teach it, it will teach you. We have a sound mind in Christ. So we have the mind of Christ. And he says, take every thought captive. If you don't take those thought captives, what they do is they will, they will grow and grow and grow. 
and it becomes like cancer inside of you. And then at the end of the day, you'll find that you are numb and you cannot feel God the way you're supposed to. You can't relate as well. But it's not that God is gone. It's because the strongholds in your mind are so high that that the, the enemy can sit behind that stronghold and he can steal, he can kill, and he can destroy because you won't even know it's him. These strongholds are the things that keep you from doing what you're supposed to do, from being who you're supposed to be and, and feeling it. That's what makes you numb. So if a, strong, if a thought comes into your mind that goes against the knowledge of God, you need to take it captive with the word of God to say, this is not the truth. This is not the truth. You get to, you see, some people I see, they have very manipulative uh, personalities and they can manipulate people into doing anything they want. If you've got a strong personality. So think about what the enemy does. If you, if you let anyone play with your brain, you know, they, they can do whatever they want with that. You need to stand on the word of God and say, this is not the truth. I will not accept this. So a thought comes into your mind. You have three thoughts. Okay. And a thought is just a thought. Sorry, you have positive thoughts. You have negative thoughts and you have neutral thoughts. Now, if you're, you to think about 60,000 thoughts a day, minimum, women, more <laughs> so 60,000 thoughts a day it's like I if people I love I love it when people send me messages really I do but you know these little messages with the dogs and the things and they just forward it but it's nice but my phone is so full dude I, when I need it when there's a miracle or something I want to record my phone doesn't work it bombs out because the storage space is only so much. Your brain can only take so much stuff. If you fill it up with negative, it's going to poison you. And it's going to numb you. And you're not going to know where it comes from. Let me tell you, that is why God says, think about me and my goodness and my word and my love. That's what we think about. It's the goodness of God and his mercy and his love. So that's the first thing I wanted to tell you. Your, your emotions don't come from out of nowhere. You don't go down the road and you th all of a sudden I feel depressed. It's because your thoughts have been on the wrong side, which you know, it's, it's not supposed to be. So your thoughts are all interlinked. Let's say, for example, you think you are, I feel down because I'm overweight. Let's say, for example, I feel down because I'm overweight. So now that's my thought. My emotion is no one will love me. Now I'll eat a chocolate and just, I'll just, it will make me feel better if I eat this chocolate. Just if I eat this chocolate, I'll feel better. And then your behavior will then change. I don't want to go out of my house. I don't want to go out of the house because I'm fat and I'm disgusting. So then the thoughts come up again and then your emotion is no i'm not loved i'm not loved by anyone and i'm still not going out of the house and then you become isolated but you see it's all starting with your thoughts keep your thoughts on god keep your thoughts on love and communion with people you know once I had, um, I don't know if, if many of you follow me, um, God does great miracles and there's a video where I was in Canada and I had this man and I was trying to explain to them how the mind of Christ is, is dominion over everything else. It is. And your spirit, because I, I always make the joke 
And I said, if you don't exercise your spirit, I will. Your spirit is, is one with God. So it's, it's, it's so precious. It's so lovely. And um, I showed him and I said, but he was big. He was very, very big. And I said, him, come closer to me and try and push me. But I put up my hand and I know I've, you know, I've been thinking about God so much in my life that it's become part of my, not only my identity, but it's, it's locked into my soul and my spirit and my body that I know that he is more real to me. Than the ground I walk on, he is more real to me than anything else. And, um, and I said to this guy, push me. And I was, I was meditating on Psalm 91, that no one shall touch me. And even if a thousand fall, you know, 10,000. And he tried to touch me, but he said, I can't. I can't get close to you because there's a wall. There's a wall around you, a, a fire wall around you. I can't get close to you. Um, so this is, this is what I want to tell you. That when you start meditating, thinking, whatever word you want to use. Meditate, worship, obey think about the goodness of God and his majesty you know we are I may have a different take than most I'm my view of theology may be much different than most people and I I would stand in churches and people would come to me and say I want your anointing, give me your anointing. And it, it greatly upset me in the beginning. And I said, you know what? I have a best friend. She lives uh, like 500 miles from me, but we've been best friends since we were very, very small. I cannot give you my relationship with my best friend. That's not something I can give to you. And just like that with God, it's not something you can give. You cannot impart a relationship. So it's about thinking about God. Whatever you do, you think about His goodness. You think about His love. The way that He is so merciful and so good towards us. And we don't deserve it. But what I was trying to say is, I believe that there is nothing special about me. There is we are all the same people. We have, we have one Father in heaven, and we are, we are children because He made us divine, like Him. He said, "Whatever I have, I'll give to you through the Spirit." So we get imputed righteousness. We get imputed holiness from Him, but it's not ours. We don't. We we can't achieve it. It's it's impossible. Now, how I see it is. I saw that example somewhere else that it's like charcoal, you know, charcoal is charcoal, but the closer you put it to the fire, the more it burns and it becomes a red hot coal and it closely resembles the fire. So that's the way I see it. But the coal also has respect for the fire. Because the fire is life. Um, you know, when you are on a, if you're on a, a desert island, and it's, you isolated and you lost or whatever, and you see a fire somewhere, what does that fire represent to you? It's life. There's someone there. And the fire of God is the fire of, of his love is not something you take for granted and the closer you get to him the more you think about him and the more you spend time with him the more the Holy Spirit will anoint you I believe and people you know people think it's it's they disagree with me but I believe no person on earth is anointed I don't believe it I believe you spending time with the anointed one, Jesus Christ, 
rubs off on you. And then you seem like you're anointed. But it's Jesus Christ. He is the anointed one. It's not us. And he made us divine. The creator stepped into creation, made us divine, and stepped. You know, now he's still in us. He's in all of us. So that's the one thing I wanted to say. Now, what I wanted to say about the guy who... Um, You see, I can never get my license as a psychologist because I just don't have time for, for things. Um, <laughs> um, but I had, uh, you know, I see people with anger management and, and things like that. And I remember this guy and uh, he was like, ah, I'm getting so angry. <laughs> and, but I've been working with him, you know. And he said to me, ah, I said to him, listen, listen. Is your anger, is it my problem or is it your problem? Is it, am I the one with the problem or are you the one with the problem? You are solely responsible for your emotions. Because the way you respond to something, you see, you can't, I can't, I can't, um, I can't help it if people don't like me. It's their prerogative to like me or dislike me. I really can't care less. But you see, what tra is traumatic to us in life is not the person that hurt us. It's our thoughts towards that situation. Your thoughts are what, what makes you. It's like food you put into your mouth. If you're going to be on McDonald's, you're going to look like a hamburger. If you are eating healthy food as medicine, you know, it will work out well for you. So what you think about, what you meditate on, what you, if you don't like the word meditate, whatever you think about, that is what you will become. So remember what Paul said, Paul that's why I love these guys. They have so much like their cognitive behavior skills are mwah, perfect. So they would say, you know, we, we can't we, we can't know how these people are going to treat us. But they said, whatever they do, whatever goes on, you know, whether I live or whether I die, I'm in Christ. There's nothing that no one can do to you. If you know that you are in Christ, those thoughts, those thoughts of anxiety, those thoughts of, um, of anger, Proverbs, thank you. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? But listen, think about it. Your thoughts become your reality. You, if you think, if you're in a situation where... You are in a you're in a and if you keep thinking bad about this person, I hate this person so much, I can't stand this person, you know, I just want to smack him in the face or whatever. That's what's going to come out because that is your thoughts. Your thoughts are aligned to that. What if your thoughts were to change? And if you were to love like Jesus unconditionally, what would happen if you were to, to judge as Jesus, saying, this is my beloved son in who I'm well pleased? And yeah, they, you know, there may, they may be a stepping into a hole here and again. Here and again. We all do. Um, we judge like Jesus. We love like Jesus. And we know that he is the one holding us together even when we can't cope. He is that one. I am, I am the, I'm the different kind of counselor probably, because most people think that we are, all humans are broken. We are broken and we need a savior. What I'm saying, I say no, you don't need a savior, you have the savior. And you are not broken, you are misunderstood. If you meditate on that, you go from a stable mind 
I am healed. I am loved. I am one. I am in union with him. You don't be, you, you don't get to be all of a sudden in union. Christ reconciled everyone to him. In fact, the Father at the cross reconciled everyone to his son, Jesus Christ, as he was on the cross. So, what else did I want to say? You are not broken. People are not broken. The Savior stepped in to his own creation and said, you know what, guys? I'm going to die. I'm going to, to, to die. And I know what's going to happen to me. And I know you won't even understand it. And I know many of these will mock me. They will spit in my face. Sorry. <laughs> they will spit in my face. Anyway. But he still did it. Because he's God. There's nothing that would stop him. To show his love. You know, he comes to Nicodemus and he says, I am, you need to be born again. So that's a long, that's for another day. But he talks about the resurrection. Now, I don't know if you understand this, but when Jesus died, everything died because he is the one holding everything together. So what happens when Jesus died? You died. I died. Everyone died. He took us into death. Because you know what Romans say? There's a couple of things that happened to you that you had no part in. Okay. You had no part in it. You had no part with the, the work of Adam. You had no part of the work of Christ. Christ did it. You have a, just like with cognitive behavior... You have a choice. Are you going to partake in it or not? But let me tell you, he's still going to shine whether you partake in him or not. If you partake in his light and his love, great. If you don't, I feel really sorry for those who don't. But it's not something that you can do. You can't do this. You are not that powerful. Jesus Christ did it already. And now we are reconciled to him. Every person, if you are here, your thoughts give you a, a different... So for every, every thought, there is an emotion. For every emotion, there is a behavior. Now, for example, I had this guy and he was... Um, he was um, <laughs> saying to me, he was sitting in my office and he said to me, you know, this is not, this is not, uh, I'm not being helped. I'm, uh, I'm so angry. You're not helping me. And I said, this is my job to, I'm not your, I'm not your healer. You know, you need to take responsibility of your thoughts. And uh, he was like, Ugh! he said, <laughs> I'm going to hang you up on the door handle or something. And I said, really? I said, really? I said, let's go. Try. <laughs> and he couldn't move. And I said to him, you know, that's the power of God. Because it's, it's, it's ingrained in me. It's, I know it. I can feel it. I, I think about it almost 24-7. That's all I think. I, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Nothing else matters to me. I, I'm not a prisoner of addiction. I'm not a prisoner of whatever. I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Because as he holds me together, he's holding everyone else together in their emotions and their behaviors and their thoughts. So align your thoughts with love, participate in his light, 
if you guys would like to pray with me now, <clears throat> you know how I always pray for people is Jesus says that through the Holy Spirit, he will give us all that we need. He will show us, he will show us what we, um, he will take of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, the Holy Spirit will take of his and give it to us. So <clears throat> that shows us that the Holy Spirit is the one that glorifies Jesus. So if you want more, if you want more of God, if you want to, to um, feel more or if there's strongholds that you don't know what to do with and, um, excuse me, <clears throat> you don't know what to do with, I encourage you to pray. And it's so simple. I need you to get really quiet and just give, admire him. Think about him. And when you are quiet, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to Jesus. You can pray that right now. If you have not seen breakthrough in an area, if you have any anxiety, if you have any loss of self, if you've, if you've lost yourself somewhere along the road, he knows exactly where you are. He knows where to, where to find you because he's, he's there with you. So I really encourage you, if you are looking for more of God, ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to him. And he will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, because you are almighty and you are good. And Father, we stand before you and we love you. Father, we ask that, that you will open our eyes, Holy Spirit, and, and bring, us, bring us what we, what we ask before you, that you will show us more of yourself. And Father, I just pray for everyone watching. I pray for them for peace. I pray for them for love and light and compassion. And that they may judge as you, love as you, and that you will, you will look at their eyes and, and change it to your eyes. As you always saw the beauty in someone first before you saw anything else. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Take those thoughts captive. Because a thought is just a thought. You can either accept it. Or you can say, no, thank you. And then you fight it. Uh, thoughts on baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe when the Holy Spirit opens your eyes... When you see, when you see what, um, as I just said, when you prayed for people or you pray for yourself and you ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and he does that, it's like with Paul, um, I don't know if, if many of you have, have seen my, my teaching that I did, I don't even know when that was, but Paul says the scale fell off his eyes and he could see. And if you think about all these scriptures about the light was shining in the darkness, the darkness could not comprehend it. So the darkness can't participate in it, but it's not, it's not a dualistic frame. I'm talking in theology again. Um, okay. So when I walk like this, I can't see. So I can't see. What I realized is God, just like with Paul, for me, God opened my eyes. I saw myself as he saw me. I saw the goodness in people. Um, that was just for, I, I, I 
you know, if if I can put it like this, there is no one that can baptize you with Holy Spirit but Jesus. Whatever we think about baptism with Holy Spirit, I think it's when when eyes and we see. We see how good he is and how lovely he is and that he's precious. Um, and there's nothing. This is this is the thing when you know John sixteen. Um, John sixteen says, "Was it John 14? <laughs> okay, sorry, yes, John fourteen. So he says, Jesus says, "I'm not. I'm gonna have to go, but." Um, I'm, you know, when I go, the comforter is going to come and he's going to show you. I think it's John 14. Okay, so in verse yeah, 14, 20, it says, When the day that the Spirit, the day with that the Spirit opened your eyes, you will see. 20. In that day, you will know. That I am with my father and you are with me and I am with you so there is no separation we've been sold a dud in the Western world to tell us that we are separated it's impossible you see with philosophy what they tell Western philosophy because things need to be logical and radical but not rational sorry <laughs> not radical rational they would say that Separ um, like creation is apart from God which is apart from humanity and you need to climb the thing you need to climb the steps to, for it to be logical <clears throat> and if even you go to John 1 it says nope nope he shines in the darkness the darkness doesn't stop it doesn't stop to comprehend it it says that it even shines in the darkness so even in your darkness, Jesus is shining. And it says that in him was light and everything he created. So everything he created has his DNA in it. Everything is, he is in everything and everything is, is in him. There is no way you can go that you can be upset that you, you're away from him. It cannot be. You are held together by Christ. And if you believe that you need to be separated from him, you've been sold a dud. It, it, it doesn't work. Philosophy, and they were also just searching for God, I take it. But it's, it's you know, Jesus never sp spoke about the Father being sort of um, um, like an account manager, holding everything against us. No, he said... Father, Abba, it's Daddy, it's my, my dad, my dad, Papa. That's how he spoke about the Father. And he went out to prove everyone wrong. You see? Because they were saying the Father is this way and the Father is this way. And Jesus was saying, no, no, <laughs> you are wrong. You don't know the Father. I know the Father. Because I've been with him. It is actually not something you should know. You, it's, it's like, it's inconceivable for you to understand because you are created. And I am uncreated. I've been with the Father. So now I know him. I know his character. And me and the Father are one. Non-negotiable steps that Jesus says, Oh, my hand's breaking off. Non-negotiable steps that Jesus says, no one knows the Father but the Son. You see? So, you can do what you want. You can, you can work out um, anything about atonement and, you know, we can work out stuff and think this is how God is. But Jesus says, no, no. I and the Father are one. We are the same. We have the same quality. We have the same... Uh, character and um, yeah I'm, I'll, I'll go in deep with this at some other time look 
I want to, uh, let me just read this to you. My phone's going to go off any second. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5. For the, for the love of Christ compels us to, re, to reason thus, that if one died, Jesus, hmm, for if one died for all, then we're all dead. We're all dead. And that he died for all, that those who live may not henceforth live for themselves, but for him who died and rose for them. And now from henceforth we do, we do, sorry, we do not know anyone in the body, even though once we had known Christ in the body, we no longer know him. Whoever from now on is a follower of Christ is a new creation. Yay! Uh, and all things have passed away. And all things have become new through God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. For God was in Christ who has reconciled the world with his majesty. Not counting, listen to this, not counting their sins against them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So the word of reconciliation is you have been reconciled, my friend. You have been reconciled. He's done it. You can't undo it. You can deny it. You can reject it. You can say, no, thank you. I feel sorry for you if you do. But you can't get yourself reconciled. He has taken you in. And when you stand before him and you've said no, it's not going to be pleasant. It's not all dogs go to heaven kind of story. But you have been reconciled. You can't climb to God. Because it's humanly impossible for anyone to do it. We try and we fail. What does Jesus say? He says, if you have thought about a woman, you're an adulterer. If you are angry, you're a murderer. Oopsie. Because we think we're still good. Because we've not murdered anyone. But what about being angry? Jesus says we're a murderer if we do that. Thank God for a savior who is perfect in every way. The Father's only beloved Son who came for us. So the world is not, he didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. So he's done it. He's reconciled you, and your choice is either to participate in it or to say no thank you. I encourage you to participate in it, because in him is life, and life in abundance. God bless you all, and I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Bye-bye.